You guys remember this? This is the Loki Ghost S1 uh, case. We built this as a small form factor challenge where I actually fit two 240 millimeter radiators in here and a complete custom loop. I don't even remember what graphics card this is. I believe it's a Titan XP. I don't remember which one though. Oh, it's gonna be a little, a big P because it's got a DVI. Anyway, that's besides the point. This has a 9900K in here that if my memory recall is correct, which by the way, it's been shoddy at best lately. This was actually a pretty good CPU that had very good overclocking headroom and did not require a whole lot of voltage, making it a very good silicon lottery winner. This build back here is Phil's build. This has a retail 9900K, and I say retail because the, this chip was sent to us by Intel, and typically the ones we get from Intel uh, have very good ASIC quality, which means that we can get good overclocks without having to really push voltages too far and stuff. Uh, this one here, every single CPU we've ever gotten from Micro Center, no dig at Micro Center. It's just our history has been, they're not good overclockers because I don't know if it has something to do with the stepping or whatever that they get sent, or I don't know. I don't know. That, this is just my observation over the years I've been doing this channel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire this, up, this one up right here. I'm gonna remind myself of what the settings were and what the overclock capability is of this. Then we're gonna rip it out of here. We're gonna rip this heart out like Temple of Doom style. And we're gonna Achmoon Ra over here, okay? So hopefully it'll work. We interrupt this video to bring you a special message from iFixit. No, we interrupt this interruption with this interruption. That new stuff from iFixit. We should have a new graphics card, but inventory sucks. Fix the inventory problems with iFixit. Whoa, don't drop it. Can't fix that with iFixit. Just kidding, yes you can. Wish you could take iFixit with you anywhere, but your pockets aren't big enough. Introducing the new Moray. And the new Minnow. Take them with you anywhere. So get iFixit for your loved ones, or just get them for yourself. Okay, so here's the XTU software. Everything is by is default. Technically, it reads what's coming from the motherboard. So the only thing I think that's actually different is it's on sync all cores right now at 4.3. Like I said, I do remember this being a golden sample. I really do. And I have no problems giving it to you. So here, all right, so what do you want to change, Phil? You want to go to 12,000? 12 <laughs> 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 they might be getting a little ahead of themselves right there. Yeah. Okay, this is 4.9 all core. Once again, stock voltage. My stock, I mean auto. Look at that, 4.9, 1.239 volts, 1.24. 4.9 all core, 75C. So can we hit five gigs stock voltage? No, it just locked up <laughs> applying. So, so there's your first example of how overclocking is an actual restart. You just saw us do a stress test at 4.9 all core without touching anything. All we did was go to apply five gigahertz, 100 megahertz offset and just completely crashed the system. So this is where things can start to be a little bit um, frustrating for some people. Even if 4.9 all core is all that we could achieve in Cinebench for Phil, that's already way more performance than he's used to seeing with that particular chip. However, we're not done here. We still can go in there and play with the offset. We haven't set a voltage offset yet, which means when the core increases, add this voltage to the stock table. We haven't even touched that yet. However, I wanna see if we crash again at the five gigahertz. Because we are doing software-based overclocking on this right now, it could potentially be just, uh, that could have been a, a software bug at that moment. Okay, let's just see. We'll 5.0 crash again. See, it did not. That's, see, that, in, that initial just crash like that, I never just take that for face value. I, I just, I go, uh-oh. I think that might have been software. It could have been a lot of things. Let's replicate. Will it run 5.0 stock voltage? See, it went to 1.24 volts on 1.35. Oh, see, it just crashed right there. Okay. So what could have happened there when we applied the 5.0 is it did that, that. So when you apply the voltage, it immediately goes to that voltage. And then because of all the C states and stuff enabled on the system right now, it would go back down to like idle. But because it applied it, it means that our voltage now looks like, or applied the five gigahertz frequency, it looks like the voltage is too low to supply that under, under that frequency. So now we will leave it at 5.0, but we will start applying small amounts of voltage. So what I wanna try right now is we know it, I saw it go to 1.244 volts. I wanna go to 1.275. So I'm gonna apply an offset to add what? 30 millivolts so that we can try the 1.275. You'd be surprised with just a little bit of millivolt adage, added millivolt adage will do. So let's just go ahead and apply that now. So in terms of voltages, the core voltage you could set like that's the voltage, just lock at that voltage. We don't want that. We don't want it burning up wattage 
and uh, silicon life and just heat and all that for no reason. So we set the offsets, which means when it goes under a turbo condition, it will add the voltage we're adding here. So we're gonna add the 30 millivolts, like I said, because it was going to 1.244, which means I'm gonna apply that first. So now when we go to our 5.0 all core, when I click apply right here, we should see that, we should see the 4.3 go to five real, real quickly. We'll see the EDP limit turned yes and turn yellow because it'll throttle for a moment because power limitations. And then this should shoot up to the 1.275. 1.245 is what that just showed. Oh, it just crashed. I'm trying to load Cinebench. So I undid the timings, I undid the XMP and all that. I wanna see now with, with those same settings, if we still crash. If we do, then we know that it's going to be uh, CPU related, not memory. So if you have too much happening at one time when you're adjusting voltages and whatnot, you need to isolate what change had what effect. And if you've got things, if you're turning multiple knobs at once and you've got other overclocks applying, XMP is an overclock of the memory controller, by the way, which is on the CPU, you've got to isolate it. So typically we'll do CPU overclock first and then bring our memory up to where it needs to be. Sometimes you can't hit the XMP speed with a max CPU overclock. But I found that depending on your application, it's better to have the max CPU overclock and then the fastest dialed in memory that you can get versus the other direction of having fastest memory and then a slower CPU. Okay, so we are back to where we were. Processor core, oh, it just crashed again. Oh, that's how it actually gave us a blue screen. Oh, you're way uncorrectable. Yeah, if you ever see way uncorrectable, that's, that's, a, that's a CPU overclock error. Okay, so now that that crashed again, we are going to go brute force method. So I'm gonna try a 50 millivolt. As you can see, 1.3 volts. That's where yours was like baking. Yeah. All right, so Windows decided to update and stuff. So anyway, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and tear the CPU out of here. Um, Phil knows where his settings and stuff are, obviously. We're gonna see if this one will beat the one he's currently got. Hey, if we can get anywhere, if we can get the same offsets and stuff that he has, which is 5.1 all core, 5.27 core and down, at less than 100 Celsius, then, then that's a win in my book, okay? Also too, I'm starting to like tell them, hey, we should do a custom loop in this thing, you know, and take the AIO out of there because you'll see the pump that's in here is the absolute perfect solution for that. Also too, I gotta, it's been a while since I've taken this thing apart. I gotta take all these little side pieces and stuff off. It's just gonna be kind of a pain in the butt. I can't get that to fit down in there. How did I get that screw in there? didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. A zip tie just fell out of it. Wait, why is that <laughs> unused, unused zip, zip tie? tie in there? There's our RTX uh, Titan X. Says RTX? so right there. <laughs> wow, GTX. <laughs> GTX Titan X. Here are the tubes that go to the top rad. This was actually a really fun build. I had a lot of fun doing this one. I haven't had to talk to people in five days. <laughs> When people talk to me at Thanksgiving, I just grunted and pointed, pointed the pie. <laughs> but I need to now drain it. And the way I filled and drained, if you guys are curious, since there is no reservoir in here, is this particular radiator had fittings on both sides. So I just undid one fitting right here, put a little barb on there to extend it up above so air can get out, and then use the funnel on one side to fill it up. So it's really difficult to get all the air out that way, but Nonetheless, it worked. And we are going to now go ahead and drain this system so that we can get to the CPU block. In fact, I should be able to show you the CPU block on this side. There it is. So look at the beefiness of this block. This is a Swift Tech. They don't make it anymore and I'm sad. This is a full size DDC pump, a real pump, not, not the crappy Asa Tech patented design one, a real pump with a real cold plate. So this would allow me to basically do a custom full water block in any build that's that's small. All right, let's, let's get the thing working first, okay? <laughs> Check this out, we just realized this was a terrible paste application. It wasn't even like fully spread or touching like any of the corners. But pleasant surprise, I did, I did, I do see that I lapped the CPU. So that's probably one of the reasons why it even thermally was ex ac acceptable or I shouldn't even say acceptable. I should say great, because it really was great thermals in there. 
This block, as you can see, how thick the thermal plate is on this, or the cold plate, this is why I was telling Phil, if we see better cooling, it's not just because it's two rads. I don't think the radiator capacity on this one mattered. It's just the, the cold plate thickness gives us the better um, transfer of heat. This is already no longer an apples to apples comparison just because of the fact that this one has been lapped. You can see by where the copper is showing that this is one of those ones that was higher around the edges of the CPU and not the center. Most of the time with the Intel CPUs, we found that they were high spotted in the center, which would make them spin like a top. So we would tell people, take your CPU and go to spin it, if it on a piece of glass. If it doesn't spin, then you're good. Well, this one doesn't spin because the edges were higher. So you could be fooled into thinking it was a good, uh, it was a good IHS on there. So we're just gonna go ahead and continue the lapping process on this a little bit more. I believe there's more flatness we can get out of this. So the reason why I said this is no longer an apples to apples though is because any temperature improvement that we're gonna see already doesn't match the other one. So what we would have had to have done is lap the other one and see if things improved. But I'm not going through all that. I'm doing it now. All right, so that's where I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, the scratches in there are fine. It's still really, really smooth to the touch. You can't feel them with your fingernail. It's just optics and, but that CPU now is ready to live its best life in Phil's computer and Star Citizen. All right, so we, we put the lap CPU in here. The only difference, well, there's a couple of major differences, obviously. This is a 280 AIO uh, from Cooler Master, not a dual 240 rad custom block pump combo with a better cold plate. It's gonna be interesting to see what a lapped CPU does in this instance versus Phil's old CPU would not being lapped. We're gonna leave his stock settings, or not his stock settings, but his save profile, which is a 5.1 gigahertz all core, and anything seven core and below will go to 5.2. He's got a 0 0.080, so 80 millivolt offset. This test is not gonna complete because we're not gonna let it, but I wanna show you what happens to the voltage here. Look at the voltage. 1.43, 1.41, 1.45, 1.49. Yeah, 1.5 volts on an AIO is far too much. But how hot did it get? 96 C. 90, that's, yeah, and now we know why, at least on this CPU, Phil said that that was not getting that high on his old CPU. Again, the voltage algorithm is not a copy paste between CPU to CPU. It's a copy paste based on the, met, the, the algorithm regarding ASIC quality. So this is a better ASIC quality CPU. I'm fairly convinced, which means it's, it's a, more voltage is being used unnecessarily. Remember the lower ASIC quality, you can get away with higher voltage because there's a lot of voltage leak in a low ASIC quality product. So because it's a better ASIC quality, there's less leak, which means more of that voltage is making it to the core. So, we are going to just start by, I think, removing that offset entirely and seeing if it'll even run these settings. Okay, it's running. 77, 81, 79. Look at the voltage, 1.365. A little higher than I would like to see it, but he is at 5.1 all core. 20 C drop from where his other CPU was. And do I think it's just the lapping? Maybe. I think it's a combination of the lapping as well as the ASIC quality of that of his CPU. Um, and and the, the silic, so ASIC quality and silicon lottery are not the same thing, by the way. You can have a silicon lottery winner that's a poor ASIC quality. It just takes more voltage to get it to where it's gonna go. How fast it will run has nothing to do with the ASIC quality. That has to do with how much voltage is needed to make it, make it run at its max. There's a big misunderstanding there with people on how ASIC quality works. So we're gonna try 5.2 all core, like you saw in the previous part of this video where we tried to go from 4.9 to 5.0 all core on the CPU with the other settings. That could just be a instant no. Like you'd be surprised what one multiplier will do. So I'm just curious as to if this will even, even work. Let's see. Five two all core so far, eighty eight C. Not an insta crash. 
I told you it was a golden sample. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we know exactly how golden. That it's doing this in an ITX build. We're running 90C at 5.2 all core. Oh, I see it crashed right there. Okay, so we'll leave it, but it was a soft crash. Look, it, it recovered. Yeah. So why don't we go ahead and put that back down to 5.1. I bet you anything you can get a single core or dual core to run 5.3, no yeah. problem. Let's bring Cinebench back up. And I'm gonna maybe drop the voltage a tiny bit. I'm gonna try a minus 15 core voltage offset. This was us doing five, uh, one, or five two all core. We're back to five one, but look at the temps. The green line's the temp. That's our previous temp. And that's just with a minus 15. So my 10900K at home, which is running a 5.2 gigahertz all core. Now 10900K is 10th gen, obviously, and it's soldered. It's not like the 9900K. I'm running a, a 1.27 volt, 10 core, 20 thread, 5.2 all core. I, we did a whole video about undervolting, by the way. Uh, at least I did, it was at the beginning of quarantine. I just watched it yesterday, and that's what gave me the idea of doing this for Phil, because I, I texted him last night. I was like, hey, you wanna bring your tower to work? And we swap out the CPU? He's like, I'm down. <laughs> hey, do you want a faster thing for free? Yeah, nah. Why would you say no? <laughs> <laughs> this CPU has been sitting in this box since CES 2019. That's January 2019. So we are going two, over two and a half years ago. Two years and nine months ago. Okay, so we dialed in uh, our CPU pretty closely. Um, Phil will have to fine tune this over time because time will tell, like, see how that's kind of stuck and not moving right now. But anyway, XT is being weird. Uh, five, one, all core, five, two on the rest of the cores, 40 millivolt negative offset, so an undervolt under load. As you can see now, we're running five, one, all core, five, two, seven cores or less. Things are happening in the background. He's got tons of tasks going. Crazy thing is the amount of power it's pulling now. Uh, it's only pulling 46 watts right now under load. And the crazy thing is it was pulling well over 200 watts, more like 220. I saw as high as 244 watts from the CPU being pulled in XTU during Cinebench. That dropped all the way down to 188 watts. So that's the amount of power we reduced under load. And that power reduction is also heat reduction, which is why we're seeing such good temperatures. And you can see now that our GPU temp has significantly dropped because of the fan curve. So there you go. That's my trusty viewers, is the Silicon Lottery Explained. We had two identical CPUs, one that clearly has a different ASIC quality and a different sand quality, silicon. And uh, I, couldn't, I could not allow that CPU, which I knew was a golden chip, to continue to sit in that case any longer while I knew that Phil is over here gaming on a 9900K, which is a fantastic gaming CPU, obviously. Eight cores, 16 threads, 5.1 gigahertz on all cores, uh, allowing him now to be able to do it with less heat and made this AIO obviously seem that much better, to be, to be honest. If we were talking about putting a custom loop in this, I don't think we need to, but we could if we wanted. These temps are absolutely fantastic. I get asked all the time, what is Silicon Lottery? What does it mean? Especially with the amount of new people that have joined the PC kind of a genre in the last year or so, because a lot of people started building their, their computers for the first time. And we mentioned Silicon Lottery and people were like, what the heck is a Silicon Lottery? That's the Silicon Lottery. Hopefully that's explained some things. So thanks for watching guys. We might, I might be doing a small update to Black Ice, which is my personal rig at home. Not necessarily a component update. I'm perfectly happy with my 10900K at home. Um, I'm not running 11900K because I want the two extra cores and four extra threads. Still running my, my air-cooled RTX 3090 Founders Edition because I love the way the cooler looks. So I'm thinking about changing the fan setup and potentially maybe even the case. You just have to stay tuned for that one. I'm starting to get that whole like, I've got more of them computers to build, you know? I know many of you feel that way, so you can build vicariously through us. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you're new around here. And don't forget your J2Sense merch down below. Apparently, almost all the shirts are gone in the first seven days. Why y'all gotta like our stuff so much? <laughs>